All right, we're back, and it's still Crossfire with Dakbo and Ishom. And uh, before we went on that break, uh, we were just uh, basically trying to establish uh, the basis for how our conversation today. And myself and Ishoma will be doing justice to some of the stories, and uh, many of them are out there um, in the public domain. And so we'll just be having conversation on them. Today's Feedback Friday on Crossfire, and um, it's matters arising. We, we will just pick our stories. And don't forget, Crossfire is a platform for you and for us. Uh, we discuss and have a very robust conversation. We seldomly or often differ on uh, on so many issues and that's exactly what crossfire is all about and then you can let us know your thoughts by calling in into the show and let us know exactly how you feel about any of the stories it could just be any of the stories and you can come up with your own story something that is bothering you that you believe should be in the public space uh, for discussion so uh, we expect you to be a part of the show stay with us um, is is between now and about you know uh, uh, 9.55, and so we have uh, enough time to take your calls and at the same time to have a very um, fantastic conversation uh, in the studio. Now, we took you through stories making headlines, and the first one on the list is Osibadio requests approval for vermint from House of Representatives to fund critical projects. Now, um, the vice president or the acting president came out to, to approach them and wrote a letter to the assembly and is trying to get money so that critical projects can actually uh, be, uh, be done. Now, uh, Ishama, my question on this uh, request from the acting president, I don't think is a big deal. But one thing that I know about Vermont is that, uh, uh, you know, be that um, a budget is in surplus or there is a deficit after it, it must have been passed as a bill, uh, it's been approved. I expect that wherever is the um, um, angles and sources to finance the budget should be the focus, not, you know, government trying to dig deep into uh, an account, you know, that is probably been, uh, be, be, been planned, been planned, you know, uh, you know, for something else, or a government account, but it is uh, being hired as part of what they're going to spend for the budget. It's been passed into law, and my expectation is that government will just reel out their plan or their program as stated in the budget, and they can do what they want to do. A lot of people, uh, you know, uh, feel, you know, that vermint is not a very good way to go. Now, vermint is that government wants to move an account from, I mean, move money from one account to another. So it could be that they, they intend to move money from the ecological account. Maybe we have enough money there. And then we want to move it into uh, 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 another uh, project account where yeah, they can do some... Project. Exactly, capital project account that where they can do some certain deal, things. Actually. Mm. I mean, understanding that... Who assures that the money is paid back if, if eventually they allow them to move money you know, like that? Well, we have mm. the Minister of Finance who oversees financial issues as this. The Minister for Finance should, and then of course the central bank, you know, the, the um, governor of the central bank, of course they should work hand in hand to ensure that I mean, we do not suffer the same fate we suffered during the previous administration. As no, even long last as, year. Even last year. Well, I mean, the, the uh, most the critical, the most critical was, you know, the previous administration where the country, you know, all what we've seen today as regards um, the, the country running into a deficit started from, we can trace all that to the origin, where the country became broke because of our expendings. We, we, we spent a lot we could not save, and then we could not also make money, sufficient revenue. So at the end of the day, if, we, if the government wants to move funds from the ecological fund, say into a capital account, into a capital fund, what would it be used for? Capital projects, being able to set up industries, for the good of the economy, being able to build good roads for the good of the economy. As long as the interest is feasible, it's something which we know would help the country grow. I mean, that shouldn't be no, a No, I mean, my, my concern and the reason why um, uh, this is making headlines is the fact that, uh, you know, when you have a government whose, um, whose plan or, 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 or uh, process is not very clear to the public. You are not really very sure if what they are asking, you know, uh, to use this money how, for how is what is going no. to be used for. How clear um, can it be? 
I mean, there's a lot going on right now. How and clear? APC government when, when probably you say, needs money. No, Daku, when to, you say yeah. clear, it is not clear to the public. In this case, we're talking about the House of Representatives, yeah. who is also indirectly and directly a function of government. Yeah. But unfortunately, what we have been seeing, we have not seen as much coordination. Nigerians, right-thinking persons, have not seen as much coordination between the executive and the legislative arm of government. So Nigerians know we suffer. We, at the end of the day, receive the bulk of it. We want good roads, true or false. We want infrastructures that can support the economy to grow. That's what and we want SMEs. We want SMEs for. also to, to grow. I mean, a lot of people want to be able to set up their own business and contribute also to the national GDP, but most importantly, make money for themselves without having to rely on, you know, a white-collar job. That's how it should be. So if you... if the government, or if the legislative is not supporting the executive to making sure that that is not done for the good of the people, then we have a big problem. Am I like Okay, uh, we'll see how the story pans out. But my, my take is just that, you know, most often than not, you would have expected that there are critical projects as stated on the budget, and the presidency, the Federal Executive Council, would have marked, you know, uh, marked out a plan where and where are we getting money to be able to finance each of these projects if eventually it is, it, it is passed into law? And, and so uh, writing at this point in time to move money from one account to another so that they can do some certain things um, can, you know... I, 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 anyway, for me, I take it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> and um, we will see how uh, this pans out if eventually the House of Representatives approves it, uh, you know, uh, for it to be done. Now, Governors Forum inaugurates Committee on State Policing. I know that you are a very uh, ardent advocate of state policing, um, but you know the Inspector General of uh, of Police came out yesterday to say this country Nigeria is not ripe for state policing. We never I, seen I, ripe for oh, anything. Hold on, good. hold on. I'm building up on this. I'm building up on this. In Lagos State, we actually launched what we call the Neighborhood Watch. Now the Neighborhood which Watch, which you criticized. Oh yes, which I, which they are not doing anything. It's an elephant project. As far it's a white elephant project, it, it is it is not achieving anything. We just see the beautiful cars and we see people driving them. But I haven't seen. I, I don't think they they are they they are almost everywhere in Lagos supposedly. And in Ikorodu, they are not watching anything. But those is busy killing people. They came towards you know our area and it has taken uh, people in the area. All of us. This is like a neighborhood watch. This is the proper neighborhood watch. If Amber Day will, if, Go if Governor Amber Day, Executive Governor of Lagos State, will eventually do anything that is similar or that can sound like a neighborhood watch, it should come to my area and see what we do and how we try to secure the area ever since, you know, we had a visit from the bad, you know, the, the, the bad guys who visited, you know, uh, Wooden Way Bridge, you know, a couple of weeks back. And so I am thinking that a very right-thinking government will look at what we have on ground. Up until now, Ikorodu area has been a no-go area. People are, are fast, you know, uh, moving out or relocating or, you know, a lot of things is happening at, at the same time and that's because you don't even know the next time they are going to strike. And so it has taken the cooperation of the police uh, and the OPC in the last three weeks, one month, to actually try and douse down the tension that this Bado, you know, group actually, uh, you know, um, you know, launched against a lot of communities, especially in the Ikorudu corridor. And and again, you you will agree with me that the six people who are abducted at the Ibola, um school in Ekpe uh, uh, corridor has still very much in the, in the, I mean, with the kidnappers. And up until now, they have not been released. The only thing people, you know, have been telling us or in the public domain is that the kids are fine. These are children who have not been with their parents and it's, it's, it's going on for, for I mean, it's, it's, it's just like it's not going to end. There was a time we heard that these children were actually, I mean, some of them took ill. And all that, you know, we could hear is that, okay, they got better eventually. Per adventure, now they have foster parents and kidnappers who are actually uh, taking, taking care of them wherever they are. So I, I really don't see, you know, for me it is come see, come sir. If state policing is going to work or is not going to work, because we, what we have is not, uh, is not any, anything to, to, you know, to make reference to, because Nigeria, for me, we're under policed. <laughs> Completely under. I mean, the truth I mean. is, 
the, 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 the problems of Nigeria, of course, it varies, and it's a lot. Now, if persons in certain quarters are saying, no, Nigeria is not ripe for state policing, the question is, when would we be ripe for state policing? Now, that, that was the general yeah, police and talking, then, yeah. Of course, some people also share that sentiment, too, mm -hmm. not just him. And then, currently, we have a federal structure, supposedly, and then we have a police network which is not as effective as it should be. In a, in a well-policed nation, we shouldn't be having the kind of crisis we're having at the Corridor currently. Nigerians should not resort to self-help. Nigerians should not resort to certain measures to ensure that they're safe and their children are safe. But on, this is the, the situation where we found ourselves. And it's an institutional problem. Because if we carry on this mentality, let's say state policing is granted, if we carry the current mentality we have, the same way we have run the federal police structure, if we carry that into the state police unit, it will fail. And it will be more dangerous. Do you know why? Uh, so what, 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 Do you what know would why? they eventually? Do you know why? Now, yeah. ask, ask yourself this question yeah. now. Uh -huh. Most, the bulk of the reason, because I am yet to see sincerity across our governors, okay. across board. I want state policing. I want Nigeria to be properly safe. But I look at the caliber of leaders we have across board, and these are individuals we cannot trust. The people cannot trust these ones to say, look, they are patriotic enough to, to do their duty. They ought to perform their oath, the oath of office which they have sworn. Now, you tell me, State police, they're advocating for state policy. We have seen the role police, the police unit has performed when it comes to election, electionary processes. Yeah. Now you want state policing, literally the governor of that state will and be the chief be, commander. Be, exactly. So, and so he can use that against the opposition. So what we need the to more do... The reason why it's not going to work. No, the, the more reason why if we need state policing, yes. we need, before we even advocate or push for, or set up a committee for state policing, we need to start fixing the institutions, make institutions bigger than the individual, make the police unit bigger and more effective, stronger than the president, make it more effective than the governor or the local government chairman. How, I did no, no, Ijab, Ijab, how do you get that done in a in a in a I mean in a country like Nigeria? Nigeria is the so first step, uh, no, no, the first step is, is speaking, it starts no. from sanity. Oh, yeah. Sanitizing our system, exactly. sanitizing each and every one of us. Utmost, utmost you are going to where I'm going. Now we are we are a, we are naturally lawbreakers in this country. We are natural. We have our our tendencies and our you know uh, everything that we do is about law breaking. No, we break we're, traffic we're lights. Not, Hold on, we break not traffic lights. lights. No, we, we, we are not. That let part, me tell you why. Can, let, can let I make this show, point? Let me show. Can I make this point? Okay, yes, please. We are law breakers. In the in the I mean, when you are not being watched, that is the time you will know who Nigerians are. And I, I mean, a life of integrity is doing the right thing when nobody is watching you. The moment you see, I mean, uh, you get to a junction that is controlled by traffic light, and you realize that it is free. No, not many vehicles are passing at the same time for the light to control. But the truth is that a typical Nigerian sees that as an opportunity to break a red light. When you see a law enforcer very close by, peradventure, a traffic police, or you see the last man, like, it, you know, as it's applicable in Lagos State, that's the only time people want to be law-abiding. The moment law you. enforcers are off the street, we, we, we just switch Dapo. to who we truly the problem, are. The problem in this country is man-made. We are the reason for our problems. We all are the reason why this country is at the level it is. And it's unfortunate when I see people say, no, pray for the country. It's not just about prayer. It's all about work. Now, you, you, you look, at, look at our leaders. Look at Nigerians also. When they travel abroad, when they travel to civilized countries where there are laws, they all comply. Whether or so not what is the problem? a police is this spiritual? officer... That's why they said they should no. pray. It's, it's making it's, it look it's, like it's spiritual, spiritual because it's the moment spiritual. they go... Yeah. It's, it's mocking God and it's mocking religion. And it's really annoying when they say people should pray, when we know the right thing to do. In advanced climes, humans by nature are lawless. Whether you agree with me or not, but that is psychology. That is human, so, human makeup. I, I don't the think that's applicable why, to that every society. That point, the reason I don't why, think that's applicable that point, to every society please, anyway. Yeah. The reason why abroad you have more order and, and you know, lawful you know, compliance, compliance with the law is because there is the element of punishment. 
Yeah. Over there, I, whether I or see. not, yeah. whether or not to see a security officer standing at a certain checkpoint, you know that if you break the traffic light, you will receive a ticket. You know they will trace it to your house. Yeah. You know they can trace it to your to your workplace. Yeah. If we have that kind of system in the country, ideally we should not even have policemen manning checkpoints. That's a systemic because issue. Because unfortunately, that, hold on, that's checkpoints a now have so, become... Yes. That is what I am saying. To get this country right, to get state policing right, we need to build the institutions, not a situation where I, I, one I individual will call and say, ah... And uh, this on person broke, uh, leave him, let him go. On the contrary, that shouldn't happen. I think we need so a we national need orientation, a reorientation. It's not just about you see, orientation. I'm telling we you the truth. You see, no, we okay, need what, How would you blame? How would you? How would you assess? What, what's your assessment of, of someone in Nigeria who gets into the United Kingdom? And then he becomes orderly. He because, follows law. He does everything. And then he comes back to Muritala Muhammad because, Airport and then throw caution to the Do you know why? Do you know why? Yes. Aside the fact that there is the element of orientation over there, but then there is the most important element, the element of punishment. Yeah, I mean, but what, what the is the punishment, punishment that is going to make people do the right doing thing? wrong, and then the element of patting you in the back, compensating you when you have done right. Here in the country, we, that do, doesn't happen. That, that, there's no so compensation for doing the right thing. Until the we right have thing is the right thing. The Get it, just thing. do it. Mm. Point, until yeah. we have the most important thing. The element of penalties, the element of punishment, our institutionalized. Laws. Our laws, point, all the laws have, have the punishment attached to the them. The laws have, but who, at the end of the day, in, in reality, one individual somewhere is bigger than the law. One individual somewhere can swing justice to whatever way, whatever you know, direction he wants yeah. to favor whoever. That is why I'm saying we need to first of all build the institution. Let the institution stop being a respecter of persons. Now, until we now, achieve now, now, on, that, we will keep, we'll point, keep pushing fantastic. restructuring, we will keep pushing state policy, and all of that will fail. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, for me, I think everything should start. The change starts from me. If we are going to, for instance, if you have a people who are naturally given to, to, to obeying the laws of the land, who are naturally given to doing the right thing, whether there's a law enforcer there or not, who are naturally given to understand that this is our society and we need to protect it, then we have a sane society. That is why you We need, have a sane society. It's not just about knowledge. Some people, it's just like good and evil has been placed before you. Yeah. Some people know that evil is bad. And evil should be, you know, people should run away from evil. But you have individuals, it's in human nature. Some people will still tilt towards evil. It's like telling a child, this is fire, do not put your hand. Out of curiosity, mm. you will still have individuals who will put their, not minding the fact that they will be burnt. But as long as there is the punishment element there, there is a penalty for what you have done wrong, that is the only way we can have a safe society. Okay, anyway, uh, I mean, to a very large extent, I agree, and I do not agree. Re the ones I agree with is that, okay, our institutions need to be strengthened, no problem. But more importantly is that the people need that orientation. That was what we were trying to achieve in 1983, 1984. When everything, when, when you now get to the bank and you know that you have to fall on the line, mm. the institutions were still there, the laws were there, mm. but we realized but that there the, was a the punishment need. element for of those course. who broke the law, of course. irrespective of a political status or class, irrespective of who that individual is. Exactly. If you want me as a Nigerian to comply with the law, that is beautiful, but then I do not want to see. A, a, a political office holder or whoever the individual feels he is bigger or even a foreigner come in mobile security and break the law and make me feel inconsequential in my own country. If that continues to happen, nobody will comply with the law. So you want orderliness, everybody must fall in line. But above all, there must be the element of punishment. You know, you know, you know something really happened uh, one of those days I, I was going on. I, maybe I've said it on the program before. But, and, you know, the Commissioner of Police, Lagos State, we, it came to the bridge and, you know, we were all together. At a point in time, um, the security, you know, uh, personnel attached to him were, were trying to clear the road and all of that. But it was so tight. There was nowhere we could move to. And at a point in time, we just realized that there was no more siren. And it was right behind me at a point in time. I mean, this is a very well-known person to me. And at a point, we just realized that 
He followed the traffic all through. We got to Yanoworo. We passed the Yanoworo. We were just going. No siren. Up to a point, he came very close to my car. And I, I, and I had to just bring the glass down. And we waved to each other. And that is what this society should be like. But when we have, just like you said, people who probably, that they are larger than life, and then the big wigs in the society, we respect them, and they are above the law anyway. And, and so they can break it at every point in time, every time when they have the opportunity. Anyway, we'll we, 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 we try and see if we can still talk more you know, about that. Now, another very interesting one, which uh, I, I, I was expecting you to raise, is the NEC, the National Executive Council, approves criteria for disposing ecological fund. Now, um, th this is happening um, at the vein of, you know, the, the very sad uh, flooding incidents experienced in the Lekki Corridor in Lagos State, for instance, and all of that. And um, like somebody said, maybe if Lagos is not included. Maybe the vice president or the, the acting president would not have come up with, you know, this kind of support. Um, you know, I, I was reading somebody's write-up and he was saying that, Shay, you know that the acting president lives in the Lekki Corridor and his house is there. Per adventure, the area is living, is living in, the, in, 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 in the Victorian Garden City uh, area is probably affected. And so, I mean, it's interesting releasing fund to make sure that the area is well, uh, I mean, maybe some form of reconstruction happen almost immediately would be, you know, would be something that they really want to get done uh, in good time before, you know, water takes all the houses away. Now, I mean, that, that's just on a very uh, funny note. Mm -hmm. Now, the National, you know, Economic <coughs> Council has approved new criteria for the disbursement of the ecological fund. This criteria is beginning to come because people vehemently, you know, um, want to stand against the fact that you're releasing money. So what are state governments doing? You release funds to them, you give them money oftentimes, and then they have an environment that they cannot take care of. All the drainages are full. Um, some, rec you know, uh, land reclamation is ongoing since the uh, Raji Fashola administration in Lagos State, for instance. One do not even have a true assessment of what happened in Lekki. Nobody have a true assessment up till now. What really went down? We know that the Lekki uh, area is below the sea level, and so there's every tendency that when we have an, inf I mean, a, a very heavy, you know, torrential rain, mm. and we don't, and the waters cannot recede, it definitely will find a way to go, and probably that was why we had the experience in the Lekki Corridor. But nobody up till now, Lagos State has not come out with, you know, a true situation assessment to tell us this is the reason why Lekki is being flooded or this is the reason why some environment in Lagos is being flooded the last time. Government is quiet and until the next big rain come. Per adventure right now we have the August break. Uh, I don't know because I mean it still rained yesterday in a few places in Lagos. Anyway, we have more stories to bring your way but we'll quickly go on a short break now. When we come back we will reel out more stories. Stay with us. We'll be right back after now. All right, we're back, and it's still Crossfire with Dakbo and Ishoma. It's Feedback Friday on Crossfire, and uh, we've been reeling out a lot of stories and taking our thoughts on it. And like we earlier said, Crossfire is your platform to let us know exactly what you feel about some of the stories that we're talking about today. Um, all right, still on Matters Horizon. Ishoma, we stopped on the disbursement of the eco ecological fund yeah. um, for the affected, you know, uh, flooding I mean, states who experienced flooding, um, you know, uh, the last time. And uh, the new guidelines are contained in a final report by an ad hoc committee uh, of, of the Council on Ecological Fund, headed by the governor of Kaduna State, you know, Nasir El Rufai. And um, aside from the fact that Ekezia, uh, Ekezo, uh, told the state our correspond after the closed door meeting of the council that the committee has come up with a robust governance um, structure, my concern is that. In recent times, a lot of responsibility seems to be going to Nancy Rufai. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nancy Rufai is, is heading a committee on, on the restructuring of Nigeria. Nancy uh, Rufai is, is, is part of the committee for, for states that witness flooding and all of that. I'm beginning to feel that some, some information, you know, uh, in the public space there may have um, a resemblance of what people are beginning to think. You know, Nigerians, we are not fools. 
We see things happen. People are beginning oh, to. Uh, I don't want to. Hey, we, we, uh, I really don't just, want to we let are really the, funny the, in this the, country. Uh, yeah. Remember, Nasri El Refer was a one-time FCT minister. Yeah. And then we saw how he he did a lot, literally. He did a lot mm. to ensure that the FCT has a semblance of what the federal capital territory of the original should plan. be. Mm. So if you have an individual who has worked, who has, to a very large extent, a picture of what. The landscape should look like what the political terrain should be like for Nigerians. I mean, it's only natural that he will have more assignments. I think he needs it's a lot all, of attention on his state. Can't you see what's happening in, in no. Kaduna almost every he week? Needs he, he needs it. He needs a lot of attention. He should focus day, uh, on the state. Okay, yes. Let me just put this. Why are we celebrating the ecological fund in the first place? Why do we seem to we seem to celebrate things that we should? Put the searchlight on more critically. You look at Nigeria, we, we really do not know how blessed we are in this part of the world. We take everything for granted. We don't respect life, which is unfortunately the truth in this mm. country. Mm. You see nations like China, for example, sinkholes. An individual can stand at a spot and then the next day the grand caves open and then he goes down. Sinkholes is one of the dis natural disasters they have over there. But what do they do? They try to ensure to protect the environment. Pump Billions into the environment to protect who? The people, not themselves, the people. Places like Alberta, Canada, wildfire. You have tornadoes and the rest of those ravaging the greater part of Europe. But what do they do? They plan. Now we know in Nigeria we do not have we do not experience such. But then why can't we plan things that we face? Erosions, for example, you go to the southeast. The southeast is ravaged mainly with, by, you know, by erosions. What are the state governors doing to ensure that they can prevent this? Desertification in the northeastern part of the country is creeping badly. The desert is encroaching. What is the government doing? When I, mean, when I say the government, please do not just take it to me, the federal alone. I mean the state and the federal. What are they doing in conjunction to prevent desertification? And then you come to the, the river Rhine areas, the south part of southern, south, south Nigeria, and then the southwest, flooding and all of that. What are our states doing? What is the government, the federal government doing to prevent flooding? One little rain comes and then everybody, everywhere becomes a river. We know drainages play, but it is not just enough to build drainages. We need to ensure that you know, the water level, we dredge the waters all around us so that it can swallow and consume more volumes of water without having to recede to where people live. There are so many things we can the do. The water, so the now, water can Dapo, also be dammed and be used thank for you, so for many other... Thank you, for electricity. We complain we don't have electricity. There are so many things we can do. We can even recycle this water, which is done everywhere in the world without you having to spend so much to sink a borehole for yourself. There are so many things we can do and okay. we should do. But I'm, my problem now like, is yes, that, Paul, yeah. as regards the ecological fund, when this money is disbursed, what would they do? Build gutters. Or um, people whose homes were flooded, no, they would give them water. They probably have plans to build tunnels. Tunnels. Tunnels, yes. Big yeah. tunnels instead of the gutters. You know, the gutters are very small and they can't take the water. So we have to be big tunnels. Since that, I was that born the yeah. till now. You have not there seen, has been have not so much tunnels. talk on ecological fund this, we want to do this, but nothing has been done. But I think to a very large extent, during the Fashola regime in Lagos, a lot of money country. was spent, you know, to reclaim the, you know, the environment. More trees were planted during his administration in Lagos, in State. Lagos State. Go to, to a very State. large extent. Go to yeah. Delta State, the Shakiri part of Delta State, some of the Ijo part of Delta State. What used to be people's homes, people's ancestral lands are now high sea. Okay. Now, now another very and important... And it will happen. It will you, keep you know, happening I was in a until forum we become and, landless. And I, and I brought this Come up. On. The waste management disposal, you know, uh, in Lagos is, it's, is in chaos. And that's because the Amadi administration hijacked the private sector participation in waste management. Working in conjunction with, with uh, LASEMA, mm. you know, to ensure that our environment is, is, um, is, is clean. But unfortunately, we have people who have made huge investment into waste management. They, they have their vans. They, I mean, at least in my house, they serve me a, uh, a receipt, yeah, that I, a bill that I pay every month. Yeah. And they come up on, I mean, to my gate 
to pick my ways, mm. and then they do all of that. I mean, they but, were so committed. But the problem today is that the state has hijacked that, and you are trying to push out all the people who have made huge investment into waste management since the days of um, go uh, Governor uh, Bola Ahmed Tunubu. Mm. And today, it's a different story entirely. People Lagos go and see. I was in the Jigbo area of Lagos State yesterday. It is an eyesore. Everywhere. I was in uh, my tour waste, area. Waste, waste on the highway. Yeah, waste on the highway. On the highway. And people do it with impunity because there is no place. I was in the Iba corridor of Lagos State. The Iba axis no, is don't, full don't, of waste. And they put it on the side of the road. Don't specify. The Badagri Expressway exactly. from Orile down to... All the way. By, by the left side, they just decorated and do you know, do you, do you the know what, Do street. you know what is unfortunate? Even the ongoing road projects. Yes, yes, yes. yes the little corridor. parts where you know the construct the, the construction company they're trying that to that they work left on. out for people to even. Wait, you know. because wait, you have you go to people's homes. You have you see refuse littered everywhere in bags in front of their homes because nobody is coming to pick it. Now, unfortunately, there will be an endemic. And then people the already are suffering. Will tell me no, they are, are going already... to disburse money to for what for medical attention. Why are we like this in this school? You see, this now draws back to what I said earlier. It all, it's all about sincerity, accountability, having a conscience, and you keeping to the oath of office, whoever it is swore to protect the people. Because now we're talking about an APC government in the past and a current APC government, but we are having this kind of issues. We're not having that smooth transition. A continuum. A continuum. Why? Who I mean, suffers it's, the people? It's really very, um, it's really very sad. It's really very sad. Um, let, let's let's take more stories. Um, yeah. I, I, Ishoma, mass defection hits PDP. Oh, As Sheriff's camp joins mega party. I mean, some members of the PDP have reported defected to the mega party following the Supreme Court's judgment, and uh, which sacked um, uh, Modu Sharif. Uh, as party chairman, and then eventually installed, you know, the Hamed McAfee, uh, you know, faction. Now, um, a lot of people, I mean, are wondering where, I mean, what is wrong with political parties? Or what is wrong with us as a people? No, what is wrong with Nigerian political system? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, I, and this is what they do. A lot of people now, okay, PDP is not our home anymore. We're going to the mega party, and there's a mad defection from the PDP to the mega party. What we do in Nigeria is just recycling. When we're recycling of leaders and people who are who we put in the public space, who are supposed to be representing our interests, but they are representing their pockets and their family only. And unfortunately, we will go out in 2019, Ishoma, to vote for this same set of people. I am going in my capacity as a Nigerian, first of all, to say that no to recycling. We don't want to recycle. Anyway, recycling does not work in Nigeria. Do you, uh, want, to ways that do you want to end recycling of our politics? Oh, politics? yes. It's we so have cool. to stop godfatherism. We have to stop, I mean, stomach infrastructure do you know how you, towards... Do you know the best way to do that? Yeah, towards first the elections. First of all, allow Ooh. independent candidature. Now, that way, an individual who Nigeria know is patriotic, who Nigeria know is ready to do the game, he will not be forced you know, to, to submit to a political party that does not align with the true representation and intent of Nigeria. Of his heart. No, or, you or, will or not. The, the, thank the, you. The, the, now, you will not have the element of godfatherism. You will not even have the element where he will have to spend millions to campaign. I'm talking about billions, rather, to campaign. And then, of course, it's business. When he gets into office, the first thing he wants to do is reclaim what he has spent, uh, probably with interest on it. You want to do, you want to end all of that negative cycle. Please allow for independent candidature. But of course, <laughs> what does the law say? No. So, anyway, you maybe, ask yourself, maybe with the current amendment that uh, you know the Senate, they are beginning to look on a clause by clause uh, debate of do, do you, um, think, you know to review think, the 1999 think, constitution think, uh, from think? Tuesday next week. Uh, mm. and, and so the, 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 the Senate, you know, already said that, uh, and uh, they said it will be done on a clause by clause and it will be debated. It is expected that the 1999 Constitution amended, will, a, a copy will be given to every representative, all Senate members, all House of Representatives members. How many members. of them have and visited their constituencies to debate some of these things since they got into office? No, 
no, no, there's never been a time where they even gather to discuss about the Nigerian constitution. I mean, this is like the first time an EB8 assembly can actually do a review of this. Did Sean follow the submission of the reviewed 1999 constitution on, on Thursday by, you know, it was read by the deputy president, uh, Ike yeah. Kerimandu, and we hopefully think uh, something will be done, something meaningful will be done about this. Let's take this call. Hello, good morning. Okay, all right. Now, let's, um, let's uh, try and, and start calling in. Let's take your thoughts on some of this issue. Now, do you see, do you think there is going to be a level of sincerity as this decision has been taken now by the Senate? Coming from the story, we're talking about mass defection from one political party to another, and then it's, go it's going to be like a recycling of leaders and personnel and people. But with the clause by clause you know, attempt that the Senate is trying to uh, deliberately make come, come next week uh, uh, from the plenary session next week from Tuesday. They want to begin to look at it on a, on a line, on a clause by clause basis. Paradventure, if this is done, maybe uh, the no, noise no, about restructuring with Dow's <laughs> down, let's, maybe let's agitation leave, leave for this plenty it, debate. <laughs> hey, the that, only it, thing, yeah. well, one of the things that will make me look at the Senate, the eight Senate, and applaud them. As, a, as honest as I can be right now is if you see this issue as regards mass defection, it will happen. Worse will happen as 2019 draws near. For as long as we cannot put a restriction to say someone who wants to contest or run for a particular office or be, in fact, be a political holder, you must at least have worked, served, and been a, you know, been a member of that political party for not later than 10 years until we have that that, that element that keeps people tied, bound to their political party, makes them have that sense of responsibility to the, to the, to the manifesto then of their party. Then you're bringing in INEC. You are bringing in INEC exactly. into but this. As, I, no, but okay. who is to do all of this? It's the Senate. So if the Senate are really sincere about making our country grow and deepening our politics, then we can start, if they do not do some of these things, at least many other you know, issues they should at, now, attend to. Is, is there no punishment? Is there any this. punishment for defectors? Sorry? Is there any punishment for defectors? Right, there is no punishment. So but you if can, we at have this, you can, yeah. if, but if, even if, when, if even this, when you get into a political, I mean, when you eventually become a political officer, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, somebody who has been put in a place following you know, a proper electionary process. Exactly. Yeah. And the person becomes like a representative of, of a ward or of, um, of a particular uh, local council yeah. or, you know, as it were. I'm saying the person rode on the platform of APC, for instance, mm -hmm. and then after two years, mm -hmm. he said, no, I'm defecting to PDP. Do you know what? That is I'm defecting to no, PDP. But let me be very honest yeah. with you as a Nigerian, because this is our country. We don't have any other country. That is the reason why we do not have accountability in, this, in, in, in our political system. In fact, generally, Niger Nigerians are not really accountable people. You should have a, a political system where an individual believes in that ideology. You stick your neck out for that ideology and you follow through to the end. Okay. All right. Um, let's take our call. Uh, hello. Good morning, Thompson. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Thanks for calling. Good How are you today? Morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Oh, good. Uh, it's a very good, uh, wonderful party. Thank God it's Friday. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, finally, I'd like to take it from the um, community politics. Yeah. You see, uh, number one, before you can achieve uh, the best form of faith, uh, um, um, community politics, number one, you have to, like, reform our constitution. Yeah. Mm. Because what I'm saying is very simple. Because, number one, governor, even a uh, child called the uh, um, uh, all these uh, community policing. Because if you go to like South South and especially South East, mm. they have vigilante already. Mm. Like what I said in, in Warwick, that was the time I I I mistakenly spit water on somebody. I drove away. You know that the third day, one of the vigilante called me that. Sir, you did it on the I didn't know. On that time, because they, they have the opportunity to know me. Online, mm. police that came from Cardinal Canada to come and work in Warwick, where did you know? So community policing is very, very, very essential. We have to like understand the power behind um, the, the knowing each other within yeah. our community or within their ways. Like, like yes, they are right in, in the tribunal. Yeah? A lot of things happen in this country that we have to like reform. 
a poor man stole siblings, stole food, and they are sentenced. Still here yesterday on the tribune. No, we need nothing mm. that will form our constitution. Mm. Both things have to work for both. It is not because you are poor or you are rich or you are this or you are that. If yeah. you go for political political, you don't reform it. You see the I charge with all these are highlights and political mentors and even on our governor. Okay, so Thank you very Thank much, you so Thompson. Much. Very insightful Peter, uh, comments morning. there. Hello, good morning, Peter. Yeah, good morning, sir. How are you doing today? I'm um, okay. In fact, I appreciate your program. You need to pick it up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yeah, yeah. We have a problem in Nigeria. We don't have uh, political ideology. What we have in Nigeria is political jobbers. Hmm. Well said. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 the time is right now for us to change this idea. Our people are not representing us. They are, they are eating our money for nothing. Mm. All right. So we should find a way, like uh, Thomas said, we should have independent, uh, independent candidates. Candidates. So it's, Candidature. It's, it's the key. We should have independent candidates. And uh, the, uh, the problem we're having here is lack of continuity. Mm -hmm. a, a, a government will call it and card all the other was started by the Why? previous government. Mm. It doesn't help us anywhere. So we should try and find a means of having uh, continuity of policy. Yeah. I remember what happened to our former agricultural ministry. It was a fantastic policy the man brought in. But when the man left, he scattered everything. Mm. Mm. So I don't know how we can do it. Like, uh, we're talking about the uh, ecological fund. Mm. They do nothing with that ecological fund. They eat the money. Mm. So they should, it is the right time to start giving accountability on whatever yes. they are doing. In fact, if you people can continue this program and say it often, I will appreciate it. Just listen. I was, I, was, I, was I, was, I was in one program yesterday. Somebody was making, making a very funny statement that whether we vote him or not, he will, he will, be, he will, he will win. So I wonder why imagine? somebody can come up, come up and say whether you can vote or not, our party must win. It's very sad. Sorry? It's very sad. It's very sad. Thank you for, for, for your comments, uh, Peter. Um, let's add a go -key. Good morning. Hello, Goke. Okay. Good morning. Good, Good morning, Goke. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Great. Go ahead. Talk to us. Yes. Uh, I just want to comment on what you people are doing. In fact, it's very wonderful. Thank you. Thank I love you. See, I want to talk concerning this... Uh, community policing. Yeah. Whether community policing or not community policing, that's the way and the manner our leader and uh, uh, managing this country needs to be changed. Hmm. You know, there is, a, there is an argument that goes between you and your, the lady. You understand me? And I, I, I stay positive well on the side of that lady. You understand me? Okay. See, there is no way in this country, you understand me, that the leader will mislead us. You understand me? The people we follow, they are the leader we need to follow. Hmm. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because yeah. in Nigeria, you will see ordinary policemen. There's somebody that's supposed to uphold the law to make, the, to make sure that the law is not broken. They are the one breaking the law. There will be another. They are not going, they are not going to emergency. Yeah. They will take the other side one way. But if they see anybody taking that one way, you understand me? They will stop you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Goki. Wow. Looking, looking, looking at that, you understand? In Nigeria, is very watchful. We are, we are people with uh, great wisdom and knowledge. Mm. True. Thank you very much, Ade Koke. Okay. Thank Quite you. Quite insightful. Um, we wish that we can take more calls on the show. Yeah. Uh, but uh, fortunately, our time is well spent on the show. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.